Good morning. Good evening. Well, half of us haven't left the building since this morning, so I'm still stuck on the AM. You know? That, and I was kind of long-winded this morning. No one aim in that. But, uh, let's see here. If I can get over here. Malachi chapter 4. That's where I want to start and then end up in Psalm 2. Malachi chapter 4. You know, well, well, let's just read here. It's talking about the great day of Jehovah. Just these first three verses. Malachi chapter 4. For behold, the day is coming, burning like a furnace, and all the arrogant and every worker of wickedness will be chaff. And the day that is coming will set them aflame, says Yahweh of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness will rise with healing in its wings, and you will go forth and skip about like calves from the stall. And you will tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day which I am preparing says Yahweh of hosts. And turn over here to Psalm 2. Psalm 2 begins asking with a question where we just were in Malachi and, and talking about this great, great and really terrible day of God. You know, sometimes we look off at the world and and we wonder why it is that wicked people prosper. Uh, why is it that good people die? And the wicked just seem to go on and on. You know, we might even look to what's going on in Ukraine right now. Hospitals being bombed, children, sinners. Uh, I think that... Uh, read a news article that the satellite image found a new mass grave where upwards of 9,000 people, civilians, uh, may be buried. This innocent people getting killed. And, and we look at this, and, you know, it starts off, the day is coming. You know, Malachi, it's right before that blank page that separates the Old and New Testament, between Malachi and, and Matthew. There's about to be 400 years of silence, a little over 400, around 430 years of silence, when God will not be speaking through a prophet. He says later in chapter 4 that he's going to be seeing, sending Elijah. Now, he's not talking about Elijah. He's talking about John the Immerser, who has that spirit of Elijah. But the last thing that God wanted to do before going silent, verbally silent, because even though he wasn't speaking, he was still working. Right? God, he never punches the clock and says, well, I'm done for the day. I'm going to go home. But the last thing that he says, he wants the people to be encouraged. But people have always had something against God. Back here in Psalm 2, it starts off with the question, and it asks, why do the nations rage and the peoples meditate on a vain thing? The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers take counsel together against Yahweh and against his anointed, saying, let us tear their fetters apart and cast away their cords from us. Why do the nations rage? And the, these people, they're thinking about vain things. It's point... The, the nations, these, they're warring against God. They're warring against God's people. And I just want you to, to picture that for a moment because it's a vain thing and, and they're taking counsel together. Now, when we look out at the world today, we see all of these political movements, all of these cultural movements, whether it's pro-abortion, pro-homosexuality, pro-LGTBQ, XYZ, whatever. But they're doing it, but they're all coming together. And what are they trying to do? They're trying to make war with God. But they know that it's a vain thing. Half of them don't even believe in God, or at least not the God of the Bible. So what's the next best thing that they can do? Make war with God's people. 
And they sit here and they plan and they take counsel together. How, how can we do this? How can we attack them politically? How can we stop them from going to worship? How can we make it more difficult for them to have services in person or do this or, or that? We want to tear God's people apart. I mean, we want to cast away their cords from us. We don't want them as a part of society. We don't want anything to do with them. But then look at verse 4 of Psalm 2. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord mocks them. I just picture God looking down at all of these people with all of their agendas that aren't his and trying to take it out on God's people. And him just letting out this great laugh at how ridiculous it is. You know, almost as though he's saying, look, do you not know that, that even if you were to kill every faithful Christian on earth, do you not understand that their death is gain? Do you not understand that you're actually doing them a favor by doing that because you're sending them straight to me? That's where I am. He laughs at them. And then it says, he speaks to them in his anger and terrifies them in his fury, saying, but as for me, I have installed my king upon Zion, my holy mountain. These people warring against God, God laughing at them. Do you not know you can elect whatever leader you want. You can choose from among the people someone to, to guide you in blindness all you want to, but no, I have installed my king, this prophetic message uh, of Christ. So it's so very interesting how sometimes we forget that. We forget that the battle has already been won. And he picks up here in verse 7, this being the psalmist, I will surely tell of the decree of Yahweh. He said to me, that is God said to me, you are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will surely give the nations as your inheritance and the ends of the earth as your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall shatter them like a potter's vessel. He has installed his king. He has installed Jesus Christ, our high priest, our great sacrifice. And upon that resurrection, he would, he sat on the right hand of God. There's nothing that these people can do. So now, O oh kings, show insight. Take warning, O oh judges of the earth. Serve Yahweh with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and you perish in the way, for his wrath may soon be kindled. How blessed are those who take refuge in him. It's just a wonderful sentiment. Because as we go out into the world this week, we, we, see, we see way too much. I mean, there's not really a, a better way or a worse way to put it. It's just, it's heartbreaking everything that we are forced to watch. It doesn't matter, you can turn off the television, it'll pop up on the radio. You can turn off the radio and the television, it'll pop up on the street corner. It doesn't matter, it's, it's all there. And, and there are many people who they lose sight of the fact that God who is on their side, God who who blesses the ones who take refuge in him, that he is up there just laughing at the vanity of man. I have installed my king. 
And he laughs at earth and he says to man, and we're supposed, supposed to proclaim this to men, but they won't listen, that, there, that you need to repent. Because there is a time when the son's anger will be kindled. And then it's going to be too late. And just because the punishment hasn't come now, don't think that it isn't coming. Psalm 7, 11, God, he is a righteous judge. He is angry with the wicked every day. When you leave this building and go about your week, remember that God is in control. Remember that no matter what you're going through, no matter what the trial may be, some have it worse than others, if we can say that. But remember, the battle's already been won. It says, the Lord will fight for you. You hold your peace. The scriptures say the Lord is a man of war. There's a lot of people, they grow up, you know, farmers or, you know, never served military service or maybe not farmers, maybe just one job or another, but never serving in the military service or not being in a military household, know nothing about it. That's okay. God knows how to fight. And he fights on your behalf. Remember that as you go through the week. When those trials come upon you, Take a moment to reflect on that. Even if it's just closing your eyes real quick and saying, God, I know you're in control. Pray as they did in the Psalms that God would fight for you. We read scripture. And there are men in the Bible saying, strike down my enemies, God. God, you fight for me. Don't let them rise up. We don't pray like that that much anymore. Christians have become pacifists for the most part. But when we look at the Bible, Lord, my enemy is all around me. Do not let them rise up against me. Strike them down. That's how David prayed. And what was David? Man who made mistakes, but a man after the Lord's own heart. Just as you go through the week, just focus that God's in control. He's already got everything taken care of. He's already seen, seen the, the plan come to fruition. We just have to have faith. And if there's anything that we can do to help you in that faith, then please make that known by coming forward and as we stand and as we sing.